What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. We are going to be doing another Watch of Realms video and it is going to be on Erica, the, uh, the Spider Queen, right? The Crimson Widow. She is a Spider Queen. I am lucky enough to have an Awakened 1 Erica from an early onset, from way back when. Um, got super lucky on pulling her twice. So we're going to do a showcase on her. She does have a little bit of a jiggle, not much, but she, she's got a bit going on there uh, for those of you that are liking her for that um yeah so we'll go through her promotions we'll go through her skills then we'll go through her awakens then we'll go through her gear and what artifact i use on her um obviously we talk about the gear in a little bit more in depth um so the crimson widow Araka, the piercer law uh, let's have a look at her promotions at level one she gets spider toxin which we'll cover in the skills uh, promotion 2, she gets an attack range boost. It's only on that single lane, though. It's not on the sides, okay? Um, promotion 3, she gets a messy web. <laughs> messy web? Um, basic attributes are increased on 4 and on 5. Talent is enhanced when Erica attacks unblocked targets. Increases damage by 20% and crit rate by 10%. Her number 6 is a basic attributes enhancement. You should be focusing to get all of these promotions done. They are vital. Okay, let's have a look at her skills and what she does. So, talent. When Araka attacks unblocked targets, increases damage by 20% and crit rate by 10%. What unblocked means is uh, enemies that are free roaming towards you. Ones in range, not ones that are being blocked by a tank. Uh, so, basic attack here is deals 100% 100 damage to one enemy, including nearby units. This is upgraded by one. That's why it's 105. It does go up to 120. And again, she does attack both. Ground and airborne units, which is great. Um, her passive spider toxin attacks inflict spider toxin to the target, dealing 11% magic damage, which, uh, wait a minute, would be 10%, right? Yeah, it would be 10% of that one there per second for three seconds. When a target dies under spider toxin effects, it will explode, dealing 20% AoE damage to surrounding enemies and inflicting poison. Vital, right? That's actually great to be to be inflicting poison as well. This does go up to 15% magic damage if upgraded. Her messy web, her passive, after every four attacks, next attack will ensnare the target in spider webs for two seconds. If a target is airborne, the duration of the webbing effect is extended to four seconds. You know, she she is a great she basically um she is a fighter um who can hit airborne units and also root them in place not just ground units air units for an extended period of time uh, this one is upgraded and sp uh, required attack is minus one time so it would be five normally wait it would be six normally it's upgraded twice uh, the spider webs on targets plus one second spider webs on airborne targets plus one second so it would be one second and three seconds originally to bear that in mind as well her ultimate spider stance uh, the hero evolves, increasing damage by 40% and hitting one more target for 20 seconds. If upgraded, the skill cost is reduced, the initial rage is increased, and damage is increased by 20%, as well as the duration by 10 seconds. Um, that Awakened one, we'll talk about that in a moment. We'll go through the Awakens in a moment, not just yet. Her Lord skill, though, is fantastic for your team. Increases faction and allies basic attributes of 15%. Faction allies' attack ranges are also increased. For every one tile away from the target, increases their damage by 5% up to 50%. You can imagine how good that is with Toriel. Um, so it, it's just capped out the whole time when she's in ultimate mode. But the, the, the extended attack range is one tile forwards, okay? It's not wider, it's one tile forwards. But that extended range can really help you maneuver certain maps in a different way and especially like Nisande the healer can really really um, help that hugely as well let's have a look at her awakens and what she gets from that awaken one while in a spider stance increases all damage by 20 percent uh, you know probably the biggest one on her awakens awaken two faction allies damage to airborne units is plus five percent awaken three we have increases duration of spider toxin and poison by two seconds. Awaken four, rage regen attack is plus two. And awaken five, when an enemy with spider toxin dies, deals 110% AoE damage to nearby enemies affected by poison, 
one more time. Yeah, okay, you could say, well, Awaken 5 is much bigger than Awaken 1 cards. Like, yeah, you're probably right, but it's also four away. That's a long way to go. That's a long, long way to go, and we'd expect it to be that good. So we are going to talk about Araka's gear, and as you can see, my Araka isn't built up for a DPS build right now. That's because I'm using her mainly for her Lord skill. And I'm also using her for Invigoration set, which is going to buff a random ally in range to gain 10% attack. This is hugely helpful in Guild Boss. Um, it could be useful in other content as well. She's still going to survive. She's still going to um, root the enemies as well, but she's boosting someone else's attack. But if you was going to build her for purely attack, then you are going to want to focus attack Attack speed, crit rate, crit damage, that kind of thing. She can use pretty much any single target DPS piece set. Um, don't be too precise on it. Uh, but of course, you'd want to go for main attack, main set attack bonus with uh, crit rate, crit damage, and um, attack speed substats as well. Maybe some health, rage regen. I mean, that's not going to hurt. It's not going to hurt at all. But this piece here is purely for the, the buff to buff one random ally in range with 10% attack. And remember, it is random. How great would it be if Invigoration was actually the closest hero in range? That would make a huge difference. On the weapons in chest, you're probably going to want to go for something like Calamity. 25% attack. You're going to want to focus attack speed, crit rate, attack bonus, crit damage. Uh, this one has health bonus for survival purposes. The same here. Again, attack bonus, crit damage, attack speed, health bonus. Um, so bear that in mind as well. But you are, she is a fighter, so she potentially she can hold down some lanes for you. Um, she's gonna, she's gonna help you stun the enemies or say root them. Um, so yeah, she is currently in the invigoration set. Um, if it was in a DPS set, then you would see much better stats. 100% crit rate, um, more crit damage, more attack, and uh, the attack speed is not so bad. If we look at the attack speed on her currently. We have um, uh, we have 168, which brings it down to 1.7 seconds per attack. She's still doing everything she needs to do here. She's just not in a DPS set. She's just not in a DPS set. But she is going to be rooting. We're getting that huge Lord bonus for the likes of Silas, for the likes of Toriel, for the likes of Nisande. Um, hey, Nyx, Razak, um, even Apsan if you're using him, okay? Um, but this is currently what she's in, of course, which I've just explained. And uh, we can now have a look at her artifacts. And don't forget, if you are building her for attack purposes and maybe holding down that lane, you will want attack, attack speed, crit rate, crit damage, and some health. Okay, don't worry too much about defense bonus. You're not going to get much here. You're probably better off using flat bonus. Um, so let's have a look at the artifact that she's using. She's currently using Flawless Blade. Increases damage by 10% every 4 seconds when no damage is taken. Stacks up to 3 times. Taking damage each time removes one stack. Uh, this does work nicely on her um, because, you know, she has got a nice range. She's also going to be CCing the enemies. And hopefully, if you have good enough marksmen, they're not going to be getting close enough to hit her either. She can also be placed behind tanks. So she's not going to be getting attacked in that sense. So Flawless Blade is a very good artifact for her. So hopefully this helps you with your Araka on how you want to build her. I'm sorry that it wasn't equipped with the best DPS set. Um, but this is another way of explaining to you that Invigoration can be huge on a hero like Araka. Where we can just place her in the back. She can buff our allies with 10% attack as well. Just to help boost on that guild boss damage. And I'll see all of you in the next video. Have a fantastic day even wherever you are. Goodbye.